this is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the last recording of the evening. But as we've seen and predicted by Shane and Rory earlier on, the result in Florida then puts all the pressure on these kind of northern uh, states where the counting is likely to go on in some of them as long as till Friday. So we've, the three of us, have committed to come together tomorrow and then possibly again on Thursday and who knows, maybe even Friday before we get a result. Um, so, guys, what are your thoughts at, 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 at this stage, Shane? It, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know that it's changed a huge amount, which is clearly there was quite a significant polling error in Florida. Big questions there. It's less clear that that's the case uh, in other states. And it's also not at all clear yet uh, that Florida teaches us much at all about uh, other states. Um, you know, the one thing we can say with certainty is that, you know, on a probabilistic basis, if the outer edge of, of the, 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 the good side of probability for Democrats was to kind of sweep the board and have a, just an absolute barnstormer of a night, that's clearly not what they're uh, getting. Um, so then we get into that kind of, okay, well, what does it actually look like? And it's still too early to tell. Um, you know, someone, uh, Nate Silver was making a point earlier that I thought was a, a pretty good one, that we know um, a little about a lot of places, but we don't know a lot about a few places. Um, so too early to say, other than it's not going to be a barnstormer of a night statement of the, uh, statement, uh, of the obvious, there's a long way. Uh, to go on this, but you know, it, it looks more likely than it did before. If anything, that this is this could come down to uh, to Pennsylvania. If it does come down to Pennsylvania, then sit in, get comfortable, make yourself some hot cocoa, get a hot water bottle, maybe get a good book. Uh, it's going to take a while. <laughs> and it's funny. I, I, I've I've been noticing. I've never heard this before, but they call Pennsylvania the Keystone State. Is that that yeah yeah and in this election it looks like they're gonna live up to their name um one thing rory and it's something that shane mentioned earlier on when we were talking is that one of the pieces of interest is the senate and um a key point is one can the democrats actually take a mathematical or an arithmetical um majority or could they do better um, than that, so that they had some uh, a bit of a comfort point for a potential Biden presidency. Neither of those two things, it seems to me, are absolutely nailed on at this stage, with one one swap from each side um, in the results. Yeah, so far. I think it's it's more a case of trying to judge a one hundred meter sprint at the sixty meter mark. You know, it, it, it's just too soon whether it be the presidential race or, or the Senate races, it's too soon. Um, it looks to me now this like it's going to take days, as, as we predicted earlier, um, not just an extra day. The, the worry about that is, and I say this as a small D Democrat, not a, a Democratic Party um, bias, although I'm, I'm not as well. From a small D Democrat perspective, if this goes to court, that's just depressing, you know, with a very tight election, there's going to be a lot of heat around whether to even count certain ballots. And so I think probably anybody listening to this will know, know the background. We don't need to go into that. But if this election goes to court, that's not good at all. Um, I, I think it's also worth saying to look at this from the Republican perspective for, for a moment. Um, what could they have done with a more competent candidate? I mean, my goodness, 8% unemployment, you know, 230,000 dead, could be 400,000 by Christmas. Um, an economy waiting for a health policy that isn't coming anytime soon. And a candidate who, if he was running on the other ticket, would have sunk himself many times over. You know, what does it take at this stage for Democrats to win convincingly what kind of opponent do they need to run against what what kind of constituency do they think they have and are, are they going after and, and I, I say that with humility and kind of taking some personal responsibility as well because 
to not be able to put somebody like this away more easily at a moment like this is, it, it raises some difficult questions. I mean, it, it really does. And the only, the only thing I can come up with, although this is um, kind of lets us off too easily perhaps, is when somebody pointed out that Jessica Arden's victory in New Zealand is one of the only media markets in the Anglosphere where Murdoch doesn't have a stranglehold on the information. And that's a little bit lame as excuses go, but I, I do think there's something to that. And it's almost disturbing, especially if you are a Democrat, that this is so tight, as tight as it was four years ago, as though all the events in the intervening four years haven't made any difference. Extraordinary. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that, Shane? And I know you look at things slightly differently from, from Rory in that respect. Yeah, I mean, I, with all of this, I kind of, uh, my, my tendency is to focus less, and I don't say this critically, less on the here and now of, of who are the candidates or who might the candidates be uh, four years, eight years, and so on from now. Because I think they're more a reflection of the, the world itself. And I think we have to ask ourselves uh, why, you, you don't have to drive very far in America if you live in a city to find a place that is completely different uh, to where you live, different attitudinally, economically, uh, infrastructure, socially, like you name it. Uh, you know, I live in, I live uh, in, in Washington, DC. I can drive, or we can do this too, you know, drive an hour from here and you might as well be, you know, in a, in a different country and in a way that's much more pronounced uh, than you would get in the UK or Ireland uh, to, to, provide some, to provide some context. Why is that? Um, what have been uh, some of the historic failings by both parties around uh, educational uh, or education more generally, uh, skills training, et cetera, for the modern economy? Uh, just to pick a, you know, just to pick a, a couple of a uh, couple of points, and not not wanting to oversimplify, you know, what have been the historic failures that have led us to a point where you have a populace. Uh, that's so uh, divided. And as a result of that, see, can look at the same world um, and see fundamentally different things, uh, see fundamentally different truths, inverted, inverted commas. I, I don't have an answer uh, to that. Obviously, it's a huge question that a lot of ink could get could get spilt on but that's the kind of that's the question that, that 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 i that i wonder about what were the things from some time ago that led us to this point and what were the intervening failures over time that might have taken us to a different point where we had a more cohesive uh, a more cohesive populace than 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 currently seems to exist well it's interesting you say that because something i saw earlier on was um this tweet from mark blythe who's a professor of <laughs> Uh, political economy at Brown University in Rhode Island, uh, but he's originally from Dundee um, and says that he left the UK for the United States because of a woman, and the woman he named was Margaret Thatcher. Mm. But he, he's, a, he's a, a very interesting observer, not necessarily of politics, but of, you know, his core subject, which is political economy. And his he often takes a very distanced view of the whole party political uh, conflict in in North America. And uh, this is what he wrote earlier on. I think it really feeds into what you just said, Shane. Um, when you hear a reporter saying that the Democrats in Texas are already looking forward to, to, to well, 2024, you know that they've been caught on the wrong foot. Dems only talk to each other, only listen to each other, and only recruit from the Ivies. Result? Question mark. And of course, the Ivy, the Ivy in that particular um, situation is the Ivy League universities. Which, ironically, um, Joe Biden made a point of saying he went to a state university. Whereas, I yeah, I was just going to say that that's that's crap, actually. And I, I I don't mean to be so blunt, but it merits that. So Biden himself is exactly the opposite of what he's describing. No, Where no, is Biden the... is. Biden as a candidate yeah. is. But I think there's a wider point there that, um, that, um, that it just... it's this per 
per per connection with some of those local places, Shane? I think talking that the, about? The, the point I would, John, I don't want to jump over Rory on this as well, because I'm sure you've got a lot to add here, mm. Rory. My only reaction to that is I, I think the, 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 the truth I do see in that is the extent to which it's more and more easy for a person, whatever their ideology, to look out at the world in front of them and see themselves reflected back. Um, you know, in, in the kind of social media context, that's the, the, your social bubble. Um, but in your physical environment too, I mean, one of the things that we've seen over the past few decades and the data bears this out, that your neighbors are more likely today uh, to vote for the same party as you, to broadly think the same things on, on policy as you do, than would have been the case in, say, the 1950s or 1960s or 19 or 1970s. And I think that's challenging because if you look out into your world and it's a reflection, broadly speaking, of, of what you believe, it makes it much more challenging to analyze the world as it is and that can create blind spots for and that and I, by the way this is i don't think this is a weakness specifically of the, of the democrats i think it's um i think it's much broader than that i think it's it's something that republicans uh face as, as well i think for structural reasons that hasn't been an electoral problem uh for them and we could speak to the kind of you know the popular vote versus the electoral college the uh, weighting of small states versus large states and and so on but, but this kind of, the way we've kind of um, stratified ourselves and found our groups and uh, live amongst our group, uh, engage with those groups online and so on, it creates blind spots and, and, and that can lead to surprises. It can lead to strategic missteps and so on. So just one quick thing, if I'm reading this properly, Fox has called Arizona for Biden and the Senate for Mark Kelly. So that's very significant. Um, the truth right. is, that's the most significant news of the night. That's more significant, I would argue, than Trump hold in Florida. So it's been a long few hours, but that actually is, that's the first flip, if you like, of the evening. Shane, Shane can you speak to yeah, that? Yeah, so I, 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 I agree with that. No, I, have, I haven't seen that. Uh, I haven't seen that myself, and I, I'm not. Uh, so I can't. I can't speak to the. I can't speak to the detail on that. But you know, if, if so, if so, it, if so, it would be. Um, but I think it still takes us to a place where we kind of started this podcast out, which was very easily going to find ourselves in a situation where it comes down to the, the it's kind of the blue wall, uh, and in particular, uh, Pennsylvania. And if that's the case, we're in for uh, we're in for a long ride. Um. I will also just say a couple of quick points on that other theme. So people like Ted Cruz and Tom Cotton, who are probably the next vanguard of the GOP, you know, they went to Harvard and they are the most vocal about their anti-elite bona fides. It's all an act. It's, it's all theater. I, I think the, there is an argument you could make about political parties generally, and I remember making this point about New Labour, that it would probably end in tears because the career path had turned into um, Oxbridge, parliamentary assistant, parachute in to Northern England. Um, what could go wrong there, right? And, and, and we all saw what, what did happen. So what, what, once politics becomes that type of career track, um, for the party that claims to be speaking for the people and working people, you're, you're kind of asking for trouble there. And, and Democrats have largely given their party over from union leaders to academics. And, you know, there, there's a little bit of comeuppance that comes with that. But I just would strongly caution against the idea that one party is more in touch with the constituency than the other, because the real issue, well, there's two real issues. One is the point Shane makes about this isn't a popular vote, let's remember. If it was, this election actually would have ended a couple of hours ago. Um, so the, the Electoral College skews everything. But also, there's two very different target markets. So the Democrats have got just a much broader coalition of people that they're trying to hold together. In Europe, you would never find Joe Biden and AOC in the same political party, right? Um, and the, the people who vote in, in the Bronx are, are just so, so 
different in terms of their needs and their day-to-day experience and so on than so many other uh, democratic constituencies that it, it isn't easy to be an authentic leader of a group whose members are so diverse, right? Not just in terms of ethnicity, but income and all of those things. So I, I think that point that your friend made was a little cheap. I can't, I can't remember his, his name there. Um, now that being said, there is, I think, a fundamental failure happening at the, the marketing level here where Democrats are being caught so cold in so many of these races. And it's not enough to just say the polling was off because it's pretty clear their conduit to people is polling rather than actually having people <laughs> from those communities at the higher ranks of the party. Um, so there is something going wrong there. But um, but again, this, this election could still finish with over 300 electoral college votes for Biden and with the Senate coming in, it's too early to say, and, and we, we should be yeah. patient and just, just play it out. I think there's some really, really interesting stuff in that, not least, you know, and this is something Shane said earlier on in a tweet, that really if you were to put Biden in in policy terms, not cultural terms, but policy, pure policy terms, into UK politics, he would sit very comfortably in the the policy base of the Conservative Party, the UK Conservative Party. It's a thing you've. It's a point you've made privately to me uh, before, Rory, when I was last in your town. <laughs> that you know yeah. that the the left of American politics is very much kind of sitting somewhere around about the right of European politics. But I also think this is a really important thing here. The idea that you lose those um, Hispanics. Um, in dead county because you're being cast easily cast as a socialist because you're trying to make a retail offer to the blue collar workers of the rust belt and by some by some of the evidence that we've seen this evening having some success in that in the old uh sort of urban centers of ohio uh and, and Michigan's too early to say to say now, but how do you, there is almost there is almost a kind of a marketing failure that when like when you have to spread yourself that widely, uh, without necessarily resorting to um, some of the culture. The culture yeah, I mean, one, stuff. one one kind of simple way to think about that that doesn't require a lot of um, kind of Freudian analysis as to what's going on in people's minds and so on is simply look at who the Democratic Party chose to give its prime time platform time to during the DNC. And it was pretty clear that they were taking for granted what they would call the minority communities and that they were much more interested in trying. And this may yet prove to win the election. So I, I, I don't say, I don't dismiss it, dismiss it completely out of hand, but it was pretty clear that they thought, let's get John Kasich up there Let's get Cindy McCain up there. Let's get AOC and Bernie Saunders nowhere near up there to the extent to which we can keep them away. And you had people like um, the Castro brothers in, in Texas, who I don't think anybody would consider, you know, far left agitators saying, hey, you know, you're, you're kind of taking a lot of people for granted here. And, mm -hmm. and I think there is a sense among a lot of people who are not invited to the top table that why should we just be expected to turn out and vote en masse at election day and then not really participate in other decisions in the, in the four years in, in between? And I mean, to, to, to put it the same point in a slightly different way, there is a massive opportunity for the GOP if they could drop the, the kind of white diner man stick and decide how do we peel off 15%, 18%, 20% of all of these different groups by running on a more open platform. I mean, I, I think you're you're just one generation away from a kind of a center right. I mean, I, I would even go as far as to say if someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger and people at home may, may kind of shudder and think, you know, you can't be serious, but I'm very serious. If somebody of that kind of socially liberal, fiscally conservative, center right, kind of internationalist um, perspective was to take the reins of, of the GOP, I think they could absolutely romp to a national victory in a way that I don't see 
the Democratic Party being close to finding a candidate to do to do something similar with. Does that resonate, Shane, with what you see? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I, I would agree. I would agree with that. And and I, I think it it speaks to that more fundamental point that you made a moment ago, which is in any other country, these two parties would be a multitude of different of different parties. Uh, and it's a hell of a lot more challenging for Democrats to pull together their coalition precisely because it, it is so much broader uh, than the Republican one, um, than the Republican one currently. And, and we saw some of that, uh, you know, with the fight uh, over the Supreme Court um, and whether, you know, if Biden were to win, whether he should pack uh, the court and the sort of the, the left versus kind of moderate uh, divide there. But that's just one of, uh, of of many, uh, and so I would I would agree with that point. I think there's it's a bigger challenge for uh, Democrats more broadly to find their footing, and that's before you factor in some of the structural challenges that exist. Again, electoral college, um, the weighting of smaller states over larger states in yeah. uh, in, in the Senate, and so on. Yeah, that might be a good place to tie tie this off, Mike, in the sense that the, the regardless of the result, this current coalition of the Democratic Party is fighting its last election. And so they need to decide, is the next one based on a new message for a new market, or is it based on a different agenda? In other words, how, how far, if Biden wins, will he push things like DC statehood and uh, Puerto Rico sta statehood, as we, we talked about earlier? I, I think there is a very common to the boil moment within these two flanks within the Democratic Party of, if you like, the restorationists led by Biden who are saying, let's go back to the way things were pre-Trump. And the other side of the party saying, we've had two change candidates in a row, Trump and Biden in different ways. You, you, you're not getting the memo here. Um, we're not going back to anything. And so we need more radical change. We need more judges on the court so or, or, or a, you know, a challenge to the electoral college system. That, I think, is going to be the defining battle of the, the kind of first two years of whoever wins this next election, the, the, the following two years. And, and, and that could fundamentally change everything thereafter. That's a really good way to wrap that up. Um, I think some really interesting stuff. If Arnold were to take charge of the GOP in the next, <laughs> that means my, I, I haven't checked his um, date of birth, but it means my, my theory about the baby boomers finally being consigned to uh, the dustbin of history would be um, wrong. Uh, and I think in 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 some ways, Maybe some of this is about the problem with marketing, that actually what you need is a big governing idea like Roosevelt had, like Reagan had, you know, like Wilson had perhaps after the First World War with the setting up of the League of Nations. And it seems to me that, 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 that if you want to tie these great coalitions of Americans together, then you've got to have some, you've got to have some really big mission that kind of pulls it. Yeah, Otherwise, it, we, it, it, we are, as we have been this evening, digging down into districts and this and, and dividing people off and, um, and, and such like. The, the, the Wilson reference may be, may be unfortunate there, though, given that the first thing that happened to his League of Nations when he brought it back was that the U.S. Senate kicked it out and <laughs> told him to take a hike. Um, so that was more popular outside the U.S. than, than within the U.S., but... Sure. I think we should check the headlines, guys. There, there may have been some development since we, we started talking here, and then maybe we can we can reconvene down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sounds well, good. we'll leave that we'll leave that for tomorrow, I think, guys. Um, when it'll be a lot easier just to kind of scope out some of these things. But that has been three great sessions, and tomorrow, hopefully later on, when you guys have had a decent sleep and I've caught up in some of mine, um, we can take another look. Good stuff. Good to see Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks, guys. All the best. Bye. Take it easy, guys.